When it comes to Pokemon, one of the coolest things about this franchise is when the community comes together to try to find and uncover mysteries while coming up with new theories just based off of things like old art. And in the early days of Pokemon, illustrations were a big part of setting the atmosphere for what the Pokemon world was like beyond just what players experienced in the Game Boy games that had very limited graphics. And I think that's a reason why many fans have a lot of appreciation for the older art and illustrations as to this day, a lot of fans look at the various artwork from the Pokemon universe and speculate and come up with theories about the franchise that have continued to exist as rumors for years. People have tried to come to conclusions about many different things about Pokemon through the art that has existed, like what was the first Pokemon that ever was designed? Why do some Pokemon have some details in one illustration, but not in the other? Is Cubone related to Kangaskhan? There's a lot of questions out there that never fully had concrete concrete answers, but it's a cool conversation that comes out of different pieces of art that are just based on a video game. And with literally hundreds of art pieces illustrated for Pokemon with different intricate details, some casual fans may not remember some of the details that were in some of these earliest art pieces. Matter of fact, we caught ourselves asking if there's different levels of continuity in some of the oldest art, and how far back does Pokemon's history actually go? We fell down the rabbit hole looking for the oldest piece of of official Pokemon artwork. Now we know there was prototype illustrations that wasn't released originally as a form to promote the game. They existed as an internal prototype to kind of show the idea of Pokemon. That stuff's incredibly cool, but specifically for this mystery, we were looking to go back as far as the first official public reveal that would show Pokemon for the first time ever in a means to promote Pokemon or one of the companies associated with it. It's kind of interesting if you ask the question, when was the world at some level of capacity introduced to Pokemon for the very first time? This conversation came up when Luke and I were looking through obscure Pokemon merchandise, and it was this illustration right here, specifically. I mean, look at this Cubone. It looks like a baby Kangaskhan. It was a whole conspiracy theory. It's been running rampant in the Pokemon community for years, but it did bring up this interesting conversation that made us want to dig a lot deeper into the backstory, which led us down this rabbit hole of trying to find the oldest piece of Pokemon art that exists. Now, this specific illustration that started our entire search was actually from a series of collectible cards known as Cardus. These cards all had unique illustrations of the 151 original Pokemon, and it released one month before the official TCG launched in October of 1996. And interestingly enough, some of the illustrations were quite different than the standard Pokemon illustrations that used to represent each iconic Pokemon. Of course, Cubone looking like a baby Kangaskhan caught our attention, making us wonder if these were actually a set of illustrations that possibly predated the main Pokemon illustrations that we know and remember from back in those early Pokemon days. We actually were curious if this was the earliest form of the Pokemon illustrations that were made, and then maybe later on, the illustrations illustrations that more people remember might have been created. So we decided to kind of look in the card direction just as it's a massive form of art in the Pokemon realm, and maybe there's something earlier than the card S cards that could give us a better indicator as to when and where this all lines up in the Pokemon illustration timeline. There's actually another set of cards that were not TCG that released by Top Sun and had a copyright date of 1994. Five, which would make us think that this set was possibly the earliest version of the illustrations, right? But as it would turn out, these cards, despite the copyright date being 1995, were actually released after the Cardus set, which could leave this big mystery to be investigated more as to whether or not the Top Sun cards were initially printed before the release of the Pokemon games in 1996. But still, when it comes to the cards themselves, looked like the Cardass set still stands to be the oldest cards to be printed, predating the Top Sun and TCG cards by a couple of months. And with us knowing that the Cardass cards were the oldest, there is definitely something really special about these illustrations. Maybe it's just the fact that we get to see an older illustration in a version or a variation that still is reminiscent to what we remember, but still completely different. 
Okay, now obviously we probably should have started at the games themselves to look at official art, but just for verification's sake to prove that the Cardass cards did have the earliest form of the illustrations for the Pokemon games, all we would have to do is cross-check these card illustrations with that of the Japanese original release of Pokemon, and this kind of mystery as to why the Cardass cards look different would probably make sense to us who grew up with the English versions of the game. But of course it wasn't that simple and things got definitely a lot more messy when you start to try to look at all the different variations of illustrations for Pokemon that ever existed in the earliest days. Now 1996 is very key here because this is when Pokemon Red and Green initially released in Japan and immediately if we're looking at things like player guides or even just the Pokemon on the box art we could cross compare it to the Cardass illustrations and realize they are in fact very much different. We then looked at the American box arts and strategy guides to find that those illustrations were not only different from the Cardass cards, but also different from the Pokemon red and green cards. So now all of a sudden we had three different sets of illustrations with various release dates associated with them. First, we had the original illustrations that we could see on the box and strategy guides of Pokemon Red and Green, which released exclusively in Japan in early 1996. Then we had the Cardass cards, which released sometime later on that year before the TCG launched in October of 96. And then we had a different set of illustrations that were on various promotional materials showing the Pokemon off that released in the international releases or the non-Japanese releases of Pokemon Red and Blue in 1998. What caused us a lot of confusion, however, was that both these sets of illustrations and these sets of illustrations are both often referred to the illustrations from Pokemon Red, but grouped up as the illustrations of Pokemon Red and Green and Red and Blue respectively. And it gets really confusing if you don't actually actually know the full Pokemon history of how the releases worked in Japan, but essentially the Pokemon Red that you may remember from your childhood isn't exactly the same Pokemon Red that was released in Japan. In 1996, Pokemon Red and Green version would release, however, eight months later, a new version of the game would release with updated tweaks and some bug fixes as well, which would be called Pokemon Blue version. Now, all three of these versions use that original set of illustrations, commonly called Pokemon Red and Green illustrations. Then, way down the line in 1998, or prior to 1998, when Pokemon was being made for non-Japanese audiences, they used Pokemon Blue version that had the updated tweaks and small glitch patches for the game's localization process, but also used the updated version to build a new Pokemon Red. So in a way, Pokemon Red almost has more ties to the Japanese Pokemon Blue version than the actual Pokemon Red version if we ignore the Pokemon-specific differences. So now at this point, we've had three different versions of every single of the original 151 Pokemon illustrated with watercolors, likely by Ken Sigamori, but we can still lock on to those Red, Green, and Japanese Pokemon Blue illustrated to be the oldest ones so far. This at the least does somewhat explain why the Cardass cards look so different, as it was still released after the original art, but still before the out of Japan art was made. So at the very least now, if we back up, we can at least confidently say that this version of Cubone did technically exist before this version of Cubone that's caused a ton of people to speculate its origins. It doesn't change what could have been or the inspiration or source material, but it's still interesting to look at what the earliest form of art really was. Now, while Pokemon did officially release in 1996, its original release date was set for 1995 before getting a delay. And there was a poster released mid 1995 that did show off the cover art of red and green and once again those illustrations do match up with the rest of illustrations that we see out of the red and green set and since we're able to finally identify the official order of when these art pieces were released it was able to get us a little bit closer into uncovering what the actual oldest form of pokemon art really is like we mentioned earlier press kits of illustrations dating all the way back to 1990 for internal purposes do exist but they weren't for public viewing until way later on. But even back before 1995, there were still a handful of selected pieces of art that were released 
to the public to kind of low-key promote Pokemon and the fact that Game Freak was working on a new Pokemon game or a new game at the time just to see if some people would get interested. Now this illustration actually comes from very early 1995 and it was used likely to promote some sort of Pokemon contest and we can see characters like Red, Blue or Green and Oak and most notably we see an early version of Pikachu. This is really interesting though because Pikachu has brown hands and feet and a white belly as well and this is actually a version of Pikachu that we would see again later on though this time without the brown hands and feet, but it still had the white belly, which despite this specific illustration coming out after the release of Pokemon Red and Green, it actually contradicts the official art that was drawn for the entire 151 Pokemon in Red and Green. It even contradicted the Cardass version, which would come out around the same time. So this illustration was either done early, or maybe it was just a freehand design without as much attention to detail being made. Now, interestingly enough, we do have a bit of a theory on this, though it is just a speculative theory, as it's likely that Pokemon was becoming a massive hit, and with things like merchandise releasing and an upcoming anime on the way, there probably was a call to organize the Pokemon art and finalize illustrations that would serve as the uniform version of each Pokemon for the franchise moving forward. Especially with something like an anime coming up that would involve a lot of different artists, they would need a concrete version of every single Pokemon so that in their anime adaptation, things would look accurate. And even despite the fact that the North American red and blue versions had brand new illustrations, it seemed like across the board, those earlier Japanese red and green illustrations would serve as the staple used for the franchise from that point forward when looking at first gen Pokemon. Though still, with that poster that released showcasing the holiday 95 release date, it's likely that since the Pokemon on that poster were from the same set that had this version of Pikachu, the red and green set technically still predates, or at the very least was kind of released around the same time as this version of Pikachu that we saw in two different images. But nonetheless, at this point, we were feeling like maybe we're hitting a brick wall in our research. Surely, there had to be more out there that had been released to promote Pokemon, right? Something? Anything? Well, since this was something that we were just kind of diving into for the first time to research on, we decided to get some help from the high-res Pokemon community, where I kind of showed up out of the blue in Twitter DMs and asked if they knew anything, and seriously, high-res has been such a great resource in the Pokemon community, archiving and restoring a lot of the oldest forms of Pokemon illustrations and art, so we felt like this was actually a really great place to start. They actually were incredibly helpful in pointing us in new avenues as to where to look, and also kind of confirmed that the community is actively still searching for what could be that oldest piece of art. Now when we were at this level in our research, we did uncover another potential New Year's illustration, which this one actually showed Red, Pikachu, and a Nidorino dating back to 1995. This actually served as a splash page for Game Freak's website, and it was enhanced by high-res Pokemon art after the art was retrieved by a Twitter user, DMRN28. And for a brief amount of time, this was actually considered one of the oldest forms of Pokemon art, and to this day still is one of the oldest forms of Pokemon illustration, though What's really exciting is that in just the last week or so, one new set of Pokemon art has actually resurfaced after over 25 years, which gives us one more closer look at what potentially is the oldest officially released art from the Pokemon franchise. Now this actually comes from an Instagram user by the name Happy Cake Oven, who is an avid Pokemon collector and discovered a black and white reprint of the various Game Freak New Year's postcards illustrated by Ken Sigamori. This greeting card history page was included in a 1999 special edition of the Game Freak magazine. And this page showed the history of the company's greeting card from over the last few years. And if you look closely, it shows that in 1993, which likely was sent out before that as a Happy New Year for 1993, so this would probably make it a December 1992 illustration, 
there was a Happy New Year's card that showed two Pokemon, which was the game that Game Freak was working on back then. This is super cool because this is the first time we've ever seen official art that was released to some capacity prior to the original 1995 poster promoting the game and that 1995 website splash page. Now what's interesting about this though is that this is a page out of a 1999 Game Freak magazine showing the history of the postcard history. Had it not been for this page going down Game Freak's memory lane, we may not have even known about this card ever existing. And matter of fact, it likely was also in color like the 1996 illustration. So the search is still on and fortunately we know from the magazine that the 1992 and 1991 postcards were not Pokemon related, meaning that if this piece is ever to be found, it would actually be probably the oldest piece of official Pokemon memorabilia to ever exist. This is actually a massive find and probably one of the biggest finds that the Pokemon community has seen since that 1990 pitch book was finally released online. But for now, the search will continue. Also, if you look closely at that 1993 postcard and you zoom in on Kangaskhan, you can totally see that it looks exactly like a baby Cubone, so we're sticking to that theory. But hey, if you like this video and you'd like to see more videos like this, make sure you are subscribed with notifications on. We put a lot of work into researching this stuff, so it would mean the world to us. But we will see you all soon with a brand new video.